is it is a book club time. I don't know if I'll have the background music on. Look at this! I'm wearing orange for the book! Ah! <laughs> Uh oh, I'm already making my I'm tired noises, which are slightly different to my I'm stressed noises, which everyone heard last week. Uh, but how is everybody? Welcome to Book Chat. We are talking about Priory of the Orange Tree. We've finished it. So this will be a spoiler discussion. A big hi to everyone. Already been having some pre-chats uh, about this one. STS, thank you so much for your uh, 22 months you said, wow, 22 whole months on Twitch. Go Maud. Thank you, STS, for being supportive of every single one of those months that we do this. Vaden subbed for 20. Appreciate that. Said a pun. Said a pun. Hope you can finally get some rest soon now that your priority tees are in order. Well, technically the priority was doing the job, but the, the you know what? Great pun. Great pun. Thierry, 13 in a row, 20, 21 in total. And M the Cartographer, thank you for resubbing for 11, 11 months. Uh, we've got some cool cats in the chat um, and that also in the Discord call to talk about this book. Uh, it has been a lot. We all have thoughts, but usually to kick it off, Orange, you glad you finished this chunky book? <laughs> Let's just drop some pun love there. That's why we have an emoji pun actually i could nominate pun points i think i i think i'm gonna get it wrong every time pun point to did it work ah no i think it's plural yay <laughs> ah my tongue's even orange because i finished my candy my nerds finally um, Kate says, I'm still wearing the outfit I wore to work. So I guess that counts as reading attire. I'll take it. Yeah, I'm delivering pun points. Hi, KP Dubs. Thank you so much for the bits in my hand. Appreciate that. Um, Orange, I'm glad you didn't say banana. <laughs> Toast Poster says books. Lovely to have you here, Toast Poster. Lisa says, hello, everyone. Michelle says, hello, book friends. And Aaron says, I'm wearing a reading rainbow shirt today for book chat. Uh, we've been working with Nerdist to try and get some merch. And if they're not going to do it, <laughs> like always, if they don't, I will. Um, which is why we're here to begin with. Um, I love the discussion that we had for the last book where I, again, sometimes can talk. But when I don't, ooh, not always hilarity ensues. Uh, but I said, book good? And that's seriously how we rate books these days. Is book good? So, oh, we do need a shirt that says, girl, she gone. She gone, girl. <laughs> she gone. Uh, we absolutely need that. I just hope it doesn't like translate to, oh, you're perpetuating kidnapping. <laughs> you know, all that fun stuff. Uh, we're all trying to do our best here. Vaden's frantically getting some notes in on what worked and what didn't in the document that I posted in the Discord reading chat. If anyone else wants to peruse there and add some notes with their own selected color coordination, go for it. Um, but, oh, we need to let them smooch shirt. Absolutely. And we will be bringing up let them smooch uh, while talking about this book, which I'm excited about. A cartoon version of Rachel holding two dolls saying, let them smooch. I, th I think let them smooch is such a great shirt idea. Book good. Book. I get paid to host. I get paid to talk. And I got book good. Uh, it'd be cute if the girl she gone was on the front of the shirt and then something like reading on the back. Um, yeah. I, I. Yeah. Ask me what I'm reading. Could be a fun shirt as well, like a little convo starter. Um, you bring the book, I'll bring the wine. That's always good. That's always fun. We got a hype train. Stop it. Ken, did you Ken, did you use those bits just to activate the hype train? Because there were all those resubs. That is brilliant. That's so clear. Because you need bits and subs to kick off a hype train. That's sweet. There you go. We got success. We got a new emote. 
Oh, Vaden, we just it just closed. Oh, that was so sweet dropping those bits. It did. We got level one. That would have bumped us for sure. That's on me. I was terrible about um, getting that happening. Uh, Lisa is 100% down for the let them smooch tea. Uh, I hear you for that. Um, Michelle said it'd be cute. Oh, it, I, did, I read that one. You read it already. What movie? The Princess Bride. Uh, I always quote that one. Uh, book good. Let's kick it off. We'll go down the line. Out of five, or if you're Chris, ten, or whatever sort of dragons you feel like using. How many dragon scales? Uh, Morphinia says, oh, hey there. I heard a certain stream of blow-dried her hair specifically for the stream, so I had to drop by for a bit. I, it took, I had to section the hair. I washed it. I had to section the hair, and then it's like a up to get the volume and then you curl it at the end to provide that blow dry look. No one cares, Maud, but Morphinius is here. So it worked, it worked. And then I put a big old pair of headphones over it. Yes, yes. That was a loud noise. I wonder if everyone heard that. Um, I'm going to go from the top of the line to the bottom. So sorry, Vaden, you're at the end, but we're kicking it off. Darian, out of five, what you given the Priory of the Orange Tree? I give this a three. Okay. Now, you read ahead quite quickly. The book yep. had you hooked. What happened? I mean, I, I was disciplined enough to just continue the book, but the pacing for the book was a little off. The yes. characters were largely two-dimensional. Yes. Um, the amount of story they tried to fit into this book, it should have either have been a trimmed-down version of what they were trying to do, or minimum a duology, possibly a trilogy, where they could have expanded on all the stuff with Escalin and a lot more of the stuff, the politics of the Priory, maybe. This, what we got in this chunky book, just there was a lot of good pieces they have been never fit together properly, if you catch my drift. Too much fluff, not enough stuff. <laughs> Got it. I agree with a lot of what you're saying, and I'm uh, excited to expand upon that a little bit more. I've asked everyone to uh, talk about what they liked about it, what worked, and what didn't work, uh, and whether there's like a thing that could have happened to make it a bit better. Uh, Aaron, we were talking offline about how you – smashed out the majority of this book most of this book in the last two days how was the, yes the, how was consuming and i'll show you how big the book is oh yeah no it, it's it's eight, chunky. Eight, it's 800 and something pages i looked at like, like 64 like, or something. The, like like lord of the rings is is just long a little bit longer than that <laughs> or, or even the uh storm of swords from Game of Thrones or Song of Ice and Fire a lot. It's uh, I gave I gave I would give this about three and a half out of five. Also because like Darian said, it's like it's it should have been split up. It's like there was cer certainly a section where they could have just easily cut it off for one book and then split it up into at least two, if not three. Mm. Uh, the one part I really thought was unnecessary was Tane going to the Priory to uh, get the orange and and all that it's like that just felt like an unnecessary side trip or something like that yeah like all that's just like okay great you're just so your dragon can be injured you could witness the prioress be murdered by kaliba and then you just bounce it's like okay yeah just so that your your dragon could be out of the picture until the very last second which i knew was gonna happen i just knew it because like until you see a dead body or they tell you there's a dead body it's not dead yet <laughs> uh, a lot of people weighing in on your discussions in the discord darren saying 100 uh absolutely agreeing with what you're saying i hope i did you justice lisa says but it saved iad like you needed that i think yeah, you could have condensed think... it like yeah uh yeah um, and then Chris said, the story got a little point form at the end. STS just says, choo-choo. Morphinia says, hey, a question from someone who hasn't read the book, though. Are there oranges in it and do they taste nice? They give you damn powers in this book. 
if you are at one with, if it chooses you, if you are at the presence of this orange tree uh, and you consume the fruit, if it allows you to, if it gives you a fruit, if it, if it births you a fruit, if it births, if it births, all right, I've said it. I've said it three times. I'll commit to it. If the tree births you a fruit, uh, then you are um, able to just abandon the thought. <laughs> now I've latched on. <laughs> um, it deems you worthy to eat it. And if you eat it, it is the particular type of fire magic that courses through your bones and your blood and you are able to use magic. Oranges give you powers. I must have superpowers then. I haven't had an orange in a hot minute. Maybe that's the lesson I've learned from this book. I'm trying to figure out what it is. Uh, it's pretty much the Eden apples from Norse mythology, says Aaron. Birthing a fruit. I did not vitamin C. That coming. Well, Phineas came for the blow dry, stayed for the puns. Uh, Lisa, what'd you give this one out of five? Uh, I think I'm probably around 3.5 also. Um, or four on Goodreads because <laughs> they yeah. don't do point five. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I liked it. I, I do wish we had gotten more character development. And, I was thinking um, of you with that because we love our character <laughs> development, especially when it, um, takes a back seat, like when it takes a back seat to plot and world building. Yeah. Like I thought there was a good start for like relationships and stuff that was kind of, you know, hinted at more than actually developed, but I wish we had a little bit more of that. Um, and I was a little, little confused with some of the stuff at the end, but it, we can talk about that, I guess, later. But yeah, overall, I enjoyed it. Uh, it definitely could have been either slimmed down or broken up into two books so she could have, you know, developed her characters a little bit better, but. Yeah. All right. I just want to, uh, Theo Growl, Growl, we? Theo, thank you so much for converting your Prime Gaming sub to a tier one and supporting Geek Bomb. Oh my gosh, Thierry. Thierry just dropped a graphic of, of Kong and Godzilla about to attack each other and just says, let them smooch. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, Thierry, what is the what is One Piece? I haven't seen the anime yet, but do they have magic fruit also? Uh, Vaden says apparently lots of trees give abilities. There's orange and mulberry and a hawthorn. Yes, Vaden, well done on sort of like the theme of fruit um, and sort of like you know the course of nature being able to, um, yeah, up the quality of life in a way. Uh, each fruit in one piece gives you superpowers. Oh, I love that subliminal messaging for young kids to eat their fruit. Eat healthy. Lisa says, that's probably why I bought oranges last week. I haven't had them in a while. I've been craving them. Ah. Uh, Kate says, maybe that's how I got my super strong sense of smell and my fast healing abilities. All right. Okay. I'll, I will get some oranges. I will get some oranges. Um, should, uh, there's another gift happening in the Discord chat. Should we break up the fight? Nah, let's leave it a minute. <laughs> Just let them smooch. Um, Morphinia says, Mort, are you reading the book or listening through the audio version or both? Um, I struggled with the audio version for this so much. Uh, last week, we talked about the first half of the book and went a little bit more spoiler-free by just concentrating on sort of the introduction of the characters and how they set their plot in motion. Um, and I listened to the first five or six chapters. I think I even got up to maybe chapter eight. And I, it dawned on me that I had no idea what was going on. Not even a little bit. I didn't know who these characters were. I didn't know what was going on. The start of the book was very, very difficult to latch onto for me. So I bought the book, AKA this paperweight, this brick. Um, and then reading the first eight chapters, I was like, oh, I'm so glad I did that. I totally understand what's going on. And I'm telling you the next third of the book was really great for me because of that. Um, the thing, I'll get into it. I'll get into it. Uh, Chris's thoughts, uh, he wrote a bunch in the Discord, but essentially three out of five bombs, seven oranges out of a tree. Um, 
the thoughts were the start is abrupt and it is a harsh introduction to the setting. I'm okay with the writer diving in and hoping that the reader is smart enough to follow along. Guess I wasn't. No, it's the audio. It was the audio. It was the narrator. I have gripes. If you pick up a book this big, then you have some level of ambition as a reader. Yes. At first, things were a little slow for me. The language was a little too flowery, but that changed. There was more things happening and the poetic words were only used to enhance, dashed here and there. This should have been two books. The split focus on the number of characters, uh, some only coming to play at the end of the book, it divided things just a little too much. The characters do grow on you. It takes time. They are interesting. They, uh, the mixed up and debated religion led to some slow but good reveals. It kept me reading. The magic system was neat. Two forces of ebb, uh, ebbing and waxing, earth and starlight, fire and water, power renewed by the eating of fruit, uh, three kinds of fire, fire, mage fire, dragon fire, neat. Uh, also the dragons. The ending felt not rushed, but at speed, unlike the start of the book. Um, that, and I had it on two times just so I could make sure I got it done for tonight. The half dragon reminded me of the animals in Avatar The Last Airbender, the mixes. The narrator did a, voices and a number of accents. She was smooth and almost soothing to the point where I would blank out for a moment, but it was a good audiobook. Disagree. Um... I wanted to be better with it. I wanted to like it more. I really wanted to give uh, Leah Summers a solid recognition. I think it's her first book. I think it's her first book. Um, Morphinia says, do you think you'll finish it or are you considering putting it down? Uh, Morphinia we read it. So this is part two. First, last week we read, uh, spoke about the first half of it. We had to finish this. We had to finish the second half of it. We had to finish that in a week and we did it. We did it. It was a lot. Uh, Aaron says the inconsistency of which character each chapter focuses on was also jarring. Yeah, because it would skip mid chapter two. We finished it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, questions are very welcome here, so don't even worry about it, Morphinius. Aaron says, I went back and forth. I liked it till the narrator spoke a southern accent for the emperor and psyche. <laughs> and whatever that was for Kabbalah. Uh, Kaliba, sorry. Kaliba sounds like this. <laughs> she's supposed to be so beautiful. And then all of a sudden, she's talking like this. And she's giving a lot of backstory. And she's talking about a lot of lore. No, no, my least favorite. I I think I was on the plane and thank gosh, like the turbulence and all that, like the loud engine noises. Cause I was just like, Ugh. no, no. I was so, so over. Nicole's, she opted, a choice was made. Lisa says the southern accent was bad, but Kaliba was the worst. No, Nicole's was. Nicole's was the worst. She decided to make him talk like he was talking through his teeth the entire time and wouldn't open her mouth when he spoke ever. I couldn't deal. I didn't like that at all. It, I, I didn't like the character, but now you're making him almost impossible to listen to I was very tempted to just skip those chapters and figure it out <laughs> uh Darian says the narration grew on me as I continued but whoo there were some choices yeah <laughs> there were some there were some choices mm. um <laughs> what <laughs> And it's like I'm trying to discern the different regions. It sounds like the West is more of sort of like that um, Elizabethan sort of era, very much of proper British. And, you know, this is how we are in the court and we are the queens and all of that sort of thing. So they sound like this. And then you have Iad, who's from the East and is Jamaican. And then Tane was sometimes South African, sometimes... Um, Indian that kind of bounced back a little bit um, 
But Nicolay's was painful. <sighs> Lisa says, yeah, I was uh, thinking her voice kept changing for Tane. Yeah. Toaster Poster says, look, three out of five. I agree with what's been said. The names were hard to remember. I had to restart the book about five times. Aside from that, I really enjoyed it. And I will read again. Uh, Kate says, man, I'm glad I didn't do the audio, which is something I wind up saying frequently. Michelle says, I did think that some of the voices changed over time. Yeah, Nicolay's didn't start off like that at all. And then all of a sudden, Nicolay's just had his mouth glued shut. Hey, Catch-22, lovely to have you here. Did you, did you have a go of the Priory of the Orange Tree at all? Very interested to hear thoughts. Um, it's roughly everyone's around the three, 3.5 on average, Mark. Um, so Michelle, over to you. What'd you give this one? What'd you like? What did you like? Well, so I think I give it a four out of five overall because I do like a book, um, that's very, that has a very poetic style and I like a lot of the vignette scenes in it. I do like that style a lot. I didn't like the second half as much as I liked the first half. I felt like there were some weird plot choices that could have been streamlined so that we could let the final battle like breathe a little bit more. Well said. Um, yeah, I, I, you know, I wanted it to feel really epic and gripping, and I just didn't really feel that. Yes. Um, and I did not like Ead being in a coma and then her job being given to what's his bucket. Loth. And yes, Loth, who I do like as a character, but I just was like, why? This is like a complete derailment of the train we're on. <laughs> and I wanted him go to be go back to Ascalon and smooch the princess there. Um, I guess that, so, whole, yeah. that whole plot line? That plot yeah. May, did it ever get, I had a gripe with that. He did all yeah, this it, shit. He lost his best friend. He got the scoop that Escalon's king has been taken over by the nameless one. She's trying to do a sneaky sort of like, uh, you know, what is it called? Uprising to try and reclaim power, but she can't release this secret. They had a little bit of a thing going. And then they're literally around the council, all conversing and sharing information. And he's just like, yeah. Oh, it all sounds pretty good. I'm like, buddy, you went through shit. Like, bring up this Garland issue. Bring up the fact that um, someone, the, the, the king is corrupt and has been taken over and that the whole place is basically corrupt and that the, the leader, the, the daughter, actually wants to save the entire country. Like, where's that? And he was just, nope. And I was like, so that was all for naught. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, there was just some choices where I was like, this is really like derailing where we've been building up to. Um, Nick Clay's was another one where there was a lot of just, why is this happening? It could be so much more streamlined. You could have more or less the same thing happen, but like just get from A to B so that we can have, because I was like, we're getting to the end of this and they haven't fought the big dragon yet. So and what's going on here? Um, You're so right. Yeah, it didn't go A to B. It was like, you know you know that it was supposed to do A to B. And then they're like, A, oops, or A, sidetracked, C, E, G. Oh, mm, mm. and you're just like. Yeah, we saw all the side quests. We didn't need to see all the side quests. It's a standalone book. Like, yeah. And I think my issue was she felt the writer, author Samantha Shannon, felt like a plot twist equals a good plot plot twist and I yeah. think that's where the plot starts becoming incredibly convoluted because it's like even though I told you the law and then quickly told you that that wasn't necessarily the truth I'm gonna shit on both of those by introducing something in the third act that actually doesn't make any sense and you're like I was with you you were my brother <laughs> I had the higher ground so that was frustrating and unnecessary um, I hear you on that. Yeah, so I, I think like otherwise it would have been between a four point uh five and a five for me, but the back half just really got some derailments, and I wanted more time between um Tane and her dragon. Like I feel like she that got relationship. Sidelined. 
<laughs> she got sidelined hard, and she's like such an interesting character. Yeah. So Tane, who who's like hardworking, it. got her dragon, lost her best friend, got beheaded in front of her, is such a tortured soul. She finally gets the thing that she wants. Nicolas comes in, is an absolute piece of shit, and then we follow his journey. And you're like, what? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so. Yeah, I mean, overall, I really like it. I will read it again. Um, there was just some really beautiful passages, and I think it really speaks to the author's strength in writing. When there are stuff, there are scenes with Nicolay's that I do really like, especially mm. when he's younger with Janart. I mean, they're very romantic and yeah. you know, lovely in- imagery. So, I think, um, you know, I think it could have used some editing in the back half. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Um, If I were an editor, I'd be like, but why? Why? What if? Connect those two. There you go. It needed. Yeah. Okay. We're on the same page there. Kate, would love to hear your thoughts. I really liked this book. Uh, I I didn't read it now. I read it like last year. Yeah. I had initially given it five, but like as time has gone past, I'd lower it down to four. Uh Uh-huh. Like, because once the recency bias wears off. Um, I agree with pretty much what everyone said. uh, That, you know, the first half is the stronger of the two. That while I appreciate, I said it last week, I appreciate that it's a standalone because that doesn't happen anymore. Could have been too. Because then the second half wouldn't have had this problem that it has now. It would have had time to push some of that stuff out more and make a little more sense as opposed to feeling like it was know a roller coaster ride down the last little bit it would have had a little more time and i think we needed that time to flesh out these characters more so i we knew who they were we knew like they they had a bit more time to be more three-dimensional i wanted to see a little bit more distinction between iad and tane they seemed like there was a venn diagram was very very much like almost a circle um and I think, yeah, yeah. once we cared a little bit more, I wanted to see the devastation that the Nameless One could cause because he was just a myth. He was just a a spoken um, warning. But we never actually saw the devastation and what the Nameless One could do. One part in battle, he's in Tane's head because she'd eaten from the tree. And he's like, ha, 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 I'm just going to taunt you. He got locked up for a thousand years just so he couldn't troll someone in their head? Like, I don't know. That was somewhat anticlimactic for me as well. But if, yeah, if we just had a little bit more time or if we just focused on the main mission and didn't have as many side quests. And again, I felt like these side quests were just to um, not necessarily do smoke and mirrors, but tried to keep you on edge and keep things interesting or, you know, derailing what you think they're trying to achieve. It was a lot of unnecessary um, story building. And as someone, you know, like I, I think a lot of fantasies read like a and d campaign sometimes, you know, like, you know, you're from this kingdom, you can play that, you can play that. I'm going to put you in the world. And essentially a big baddie is going to come back, but you not only need the sort of Ascalon to be able to pierce one particular scale that has been kind of unhinged and then pierce through that with this sword only, and no one knows where it is. You also need two uh, gemstones, two stones that harness both fire and uh, air, water, the other element that has to be utilized at the same time only by two specific people. You know, see what I mean? It's like, ah, fuck, this isn't a quest. This is just like, annoying (laughs) like this is uh yeah it was a lot uh michelle says i really wanted sabran uh, sabran to become a mage and wield the sword so that you needed all three women who represent the three trees of magic (gasps) that's the thing but then they gave her this other sword and i'm like where's this sword coming from what the fuck is this now let's add more things into it to complicate it yeah. <laughs> Aaron says, by your powers combined, I am the MacGuffin. <laughs> uh, um, Vaden says, yeah, look, the nameless one was an uninteresting and toothless villain. Uh, um, Game Wizard says, I mean, Tane starts the book, but we just don't get too much of her um, with one chapter in, three 
with oh, with one one chapter in three or four, and then suddenly she's the key to everything. I know she got sidelined by Nicolas, who only offered that one tidbit of information, and we got his whole bloody story. And he even got like another freaking love triangle ish kind of thing, which he didn't deserve. Um, we got way too much Nicolas, and it's like that's the thing. I went into Goodreads and I read a lot of reviews for this just to see sort of like what the gauge is with a lot of it. Some are just like one, a lot of fives. Uh, the Goodreads rating is 4.23, which is really, really good for a fantasy book on Goodreads. Um, let me see how many votes there were though. 97,220. That's really impressive. Um, wow. Okay, so a lot of people are absolutely loving it. I think once you start talking about it, um, because when I went into some of the more negative comments, it's the same sort of gripes that we're expressing here. Um, and if I wasn't in a book club, if I was just reading it for the sake of reading it, just to kind of have fun, I think I would have enjoyed it more. And I think, Kate, you're almost like the case study with this, where you read it when it came out, or not when it came out, but you read it, uh, you had a really good time with it. You felt like for a very, very large, thick, many-paged book, it was actually really easy to get through and you enjoyed you enjoyed the process. But now that we're kind of picking it apart and talking about it, Kate study, nice, Jimmy. Uh, pump points. Um, now that we are, yeah, really breaking it down, it's like we are not being as forgiving. We're really kind of poking holes in the plot because – we're not poking the holes. We're acknowledging the holes. There's a lot of holes all the way through this. Uh, Lisa says that's because it was a really popular on BookTube, so it has high ratings. Um, uh, Lisa says, I was thinking that she ate off the fruit since she had a fever like Tane. Am I imagining things? And then Michelle's like, I thought so too. I don't think so. I think she was just sick. Yeah, why? Why? What's that? What are you doing? <laughs> Overcomplicating so much. Toaster Poster says, I thought there would be more political conflicts, but everyone just agreed to work with each other. Yeah, because the first half of the book was so long. Yeah, the pacing, I think, was all over the place. Toaster Poster says, yes, less Nicolas and more dragon riding. Black Belt 23 says, it's like they had nothing to do with Tane until the end, so they sent her in exile and then created her escape plot just to get her to the end of the book. Yeah, yeah, she was weirdly sidelined for that one. Jayhawker94 says, hey, Maud, I'm ready to hear about orange trees. Have, did you read Priory or are you just happy to kind of like learn about this story that you might not ever read because it's this big? <laughs> it shook the camera. It shook the camera. Piling's here. Hi, Piling. Lisa says, what the heck happened to Tane at the end? I'm so lost. They did like, mm, doo, 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 doo. yeah, <laughs> dude, I don't know. I thought Tane was going to get it on with Loth for a second. I don't know. Jay Hawker says, mm, I won't be reading it. <laughs> Aaron says, so much of the political was uh, stuff was front loaded. And then they realized, oh yeah, the world's endings. We just learned to share and work together. Even though I thought it was quite interesting what was happening with Sabran um, and in the court in the in the court I guess with um Crest Crest giving this 10 year kind of plan to overthrow uh, overhaul Sabran um deck a decade in the making to try and get a Crest on the throne which uh some of the things again it's not necessarily convoluted but it just contradicts so you've got The whole thing is built around the law that Sabran is literally a saint from sainthood and their lineage is what protects the realm. But then Crest is like, uh-uh, don't like it and is forming a 10-year plan to debunk the very thing that's keeping them all alive. Doesn't make sense. When she... Uh, didn't make sense. The Tane stuff... I'm not sorry, not Tane, the Trude stuff that we got in the first half of the book where she was like, stupid Trude. And then it's like, oh, actually, she was really brilliant. She got beheaded and her head got tarred. <laughs> tarred. I don't know if that makes it sound better. T A R R E D. Um, like, and how shit is it that Trude's 
husband. So Trude is Nicolay's partner's daughter. So his partner's daughter's husband literally came to him and he was like, fuck off. <laughs> I don't want to have anything to do with you. You're an idiot. <laughs> I, I don't know. Tragic. Yeah, true. The right thing, the wrong way. Well said, Chris. <sighs> Tane went to the moon. <laughs> oh, apparently she didn't like that Sabran's mother had an affair and that Sabran wouldn't uh, do exactly what she wanted. Oh, is that? Oh, thank you, Vaden, for enlightening us on the whole crest situation. Granddaughter. Thank you, Black Belt and Lisa. Granddaughter. Vane says she felt she knew it was best for Innes, so she killed the ruler, just like the prioress did with Ead's mother. Mmm. Okay. Oh, just a lot. That was a lot. A lot's happening. Um, we're still going through there. Jimmy, out of five, what'd you give this book? Uh, hello. Yes. Um, hello. So when I was reading this book, um, I was going back and forth with it because this book is probably the same length as Da Vinci Code. Like, it's a thick book. This um, is bigger. And, this is bigger. I, I, I don't have them to compare, but I'm just remember the Da Vinci Code being a large book. Um, anyway, um, but when I was reading the book, I was trying to be sympathetic to the writer because to me, um, oh, let me just tell you what I, I voted. I voted it at a 2.5. Two and a half. Initially, I was going to vote it a four because uh -huh. I was trying to be sympathetic to her because um, as someone who is a writer, and even though I don't write books, I'm just saying I am a writer. Um, and someone who has ADHD, which seems this lady could have, I'm not saying it's possible, but it's always difficult to focus, you know? So you have to literally lock it down. And it seemed like this lady was just like all over the place, you know, like, like it was said before. Um, but, you know, uh, as you know, in the chat, uh, we've already covered majority of the negative things. So I would like to say the positive things about this book. Sure. Um, so the positive things about this book's obviously dragons, yeah. even if they are just fairly mentioned. Um, I am a little disappointed that there was no dragon smooching. I just would prefer that. True. And uh, I'm being silly. I'm being facetious. Um, but also, I like the fact that this lady took it upon herself to write a book. Her name's Samantha her... Shannon. Sorry, I think just her name's Samantha Shannon. Oh, Samantha Shannon. I'm yeah. sorry. I don't, I don't remember her name. This so. lady. <laughs> but um, the, I know it's, I'm looking at it right now. So it makes me look even more worse. But <laughs> anyway, point thing is that I'm trying to praise this lady, not, not, not be mean to her. Um, but yeah, I, I do appreciate how much she championed this story. You know, she was very gung-ho about it. She had a very feminist point of view. It's like the feminist Lord of Rings. Yeah, and, with dragons. Uh, yeah, I thought, I thought it was uh, a stellar effort. Like if, you know, someone of prolific nature, like Felicia Day were to write a book, this would probably turn up in that, in that way, like this. Okay. You know, uh, you know so yeah. I would... I would compare it to that so i'm you gonna know. give a little tldr for that you liked the feminist drive of this fantasy book yes hey cool but it's still got a two and a half <laughs> yes five. well again you know the rest i, I don't do. need to dwell into that <laughs> perfect Vaden, you gave it a 3.25 yes i did um yeah, I, I enjoyed the book overall. Like world building was good. Um, a lot of interesting things with the dragons, the stars, the you know the different kinds of fruits. All the stuff was kind of realized well. And then I, I wish we could go into it more. Mm. Um, there was some fun stuff with the characters too. Like they had a lot of tough moments where they had to make choices that they didn't want to make, and then they made the right choice anyway, essentially. And then lived through the repercussions of their actions. Yes. Yeah, like when um, he had saved her friend, Arush, when she, her Arush friend came to, to stop her after she fled the priory, you know, she saved her from a wyvern, and then her friend still came back and, you know, poisoned her essentially. Put her in a coma. And, yeah. yeah, almost killed her. <laughs> yeah. And, but she did it because she was a friend and because it was the right thing to do. But, like, it, it was a tough choice for her because she was clearly in, dan in danger, and she yeah. did it anyways. And the clay is, like, hated Sabran, wanted to, you know, get revenge on her mm. for exiling him. And she's in the end, he still chose to not, like, 
take revenge and basically tries to essentially help her. Mm-hmm. So he he was he was a complicated character, not a good character, mm. not a good character, not a good person, but like good character, I guess. True, but I mean, uh, it's interesting because like something that you just said stood out to me. I wish we got more of X, and it's like the the book's eight hundred and eighty pages, which I looked it up. Jimmy is two hundred pages more than the Da Vinci Code, um, but. I just think she needed to stick to her strengths and the parts where it was a bit slow, the parts where the plot became convoluted and the twist became more um, of a priority than good uh, cohesive storytelling. Um, I think that this could have been an amazing book if she focused on characters, on the romance, because that's some of the best parts, like, Nicolas was only likable when he was talking about Jenart. Um, the relationship that Sabran and Iad had was really like my favorite parts of the book. It was so well done. And then I think when she tried to kind of like tell this complex story with four divisions, which each had their own lore and their own set of rules and their own relationship with the dragons and each part of the quarters had their own person with their own quests that got sidetracked by side quests and uh, then the crossover it would have been amazing I think Lisa and I on the same page with this it's like the romance was so well done that if that was the centric part this would have been an amazing book um we're already seeing some of the parallels where the hardships of the relationships are the most interesting I think that the layered law, the telling of the law through different perspectives and then the undermining of all of it that had very little to do with the actual villain was just a lot. It was a lot. Pai Lang says, focus on your strengths. Strengths. Got it. Baden says, the author, Samantha Shannon, said it was a feminist retelling of the legend of George and the Dragon. Yeah, I love the feminist components in this as well. I loved it. Um, This book would make a good RPG like The Witcher. Yeah, you can see the campaign completely written out. Even I as a game designer would streamline a lot more of this. Aaron says, um, more like she should have shortened some plot lines and lengthened character developments for all the main characters. Yeah, if we're in this book and we don't give a shit about the main characters, something's up. Um, and there were a couple of times where the main characters weren't indistinguishable enough, didn't have enough uh, depth. Yeah. Uh, Piling says, sounds like the book is missing stuff. So Samantha Shannon's book should be thicker? No. Trim the fat, as I like to say. Uh <laughs> Well, someone's at my door. Yes, you're very important. This is so good. Very brave. Weird. Anyway, Aaron says, I do love the clashing philosophies between the Western-style European dragons versus the Eastern-style dragons, Asian-style dragons. Yes, that was a lot of fun. I wish it was more visual, and I wish, again, we got more time with those dragons as well. Because all of a sudden, Kaliba is a dragon. Um, a f- Firedell is kind of a redundant dragon and didn't really serve much of a point or purpose and wasn't super necessary. It was like the henchman of the big nameless one. And Zelda speaks, says Alvac. Hey, Alvac. <laughs> you tell him, Zelda, says Toaster Poster. Um, Zelda saved Maud. Good girl. <laughs> uh, yeah, Kaliba being a dragon was a silly pot- plot twist. Just let a wood witch be a good uh, wood witch. Yeah, but then she's also, uh, that was, so, and then she's also, and she made the sword, sure, yeah. And then she stoinked her son. I don't know. Uh, Chief Puff Hairdo, thanks for the follow, by the way, 22 minutes ago, which I got sidetracked about completely. Uh, well, we're uh, sitting at about a 3.5. I gave it a 3.5. Let's talk about what worked 
let's go into some details about what didn't and how it could be fixed. Uh, I've got some amazing quotes that I want to bring up as well. So what worked for me personally? Oh, Aaron says she's also the queen's ancestor, made the MacGuffin Excalibur sword, but is still evil. Stick to a lane, please, lol. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. yeah. I, I would like to see sort of like how this all came about and if it, it just didn't seem like she'd, worked out the end of the book when she started writing it. It's, uh, eh. um, all right, what worked? Let's talk about the sexuality in this book. What makes it fantastic feminist prose? What makes it uh, LGBTQ friendly in this instance? Uh, we had several, a few instances of bisexuality that was not, look, there are two women that love each other. That's, that's, we can do this. Yay. It was just so effortless. It was just so normalized. It wasn't like bells and whistles and it was showing, not telling. And it was done in such an amazing way. Um, the whole relationship between Sabran not wanting to get married, um, being surrounded by her handmaidens, um, the development of relationship with Iyad that was like a slow progression um, she got married to a man and she liked him. She felt cared by him, she, uh, cared for. She, you know, fell in love with this man. And so that was a, you know, legitimate sort of relationship that she had. And then she also had feelings and fell in love with Iyad, a woman. And it's like, it wasn't a scandal. It, the only part, like the scandal about it was the fact that she um, was a queen and she was a handmaiden who didn't have the the status to be able to be in that relationship and was a distraction. Um, uh, Aaron says, I love that no one bats an eye that two people of the same gender were in a relationship. It's only a problem because of their class status, which stinks, but it's not frowned upon. Yeah. Um, Black Belt says no one batted an eye at the same sex relationships and no one had any problems with strong women's in position of power, which was refreshing. Exactly, Black Belt. So these are the strengths of the book big time. This is what... Uh, I really, really liked about it. Um, all of the Sabran, Kaliba, the Prioress, I mean, the Priory as a whole, um, Tane, you know, the fact that a lot of the Sea Dragon soldiers uh, were women, that was just like really well done. I did read a Goodreads comment though that said, there was a bit of a contradiction in terms of looking at Innes because, again, it's projected to be this uh, sort of Elizabethan or this uh, era where there's, a, in this instance, a queendom, but just the way that it's made up with the chivalry, with, the, you know, the, the soldiers and the guards, like it all very much lent to be a patriarchy. And then she's like, it sort of kind of felt like it was in to like tonally kind of consistent. The fact that the queens like were only used to sort of like procreate and keep the lineage intact. But then it was like a matriarchy, a ma sorry, a matriarchy that worships a patriarch. Yeah. Thank you, Aaron. That's kind of the point I'm trying to make. And they blindly worship the damsel when Iad's there going, she wasn't a damsel. This is really blasphemous. This is really hard to hear that this warrior woman is being represented in the matriarchy as a damsel. So it's like that just didn't really make absolute sense. Black Belt says, yeah, the knights were all men. The handmaidens were all women in Innes, which didn't seem to be the case in the rest of the world. See what I mean? So it's not necessarily a gripe on the feminism. It's just that you've built out this society that placates to a patriarchal kind of um, view scope, but then you contradict it by Sabran being, a, you know, powerful. I don't know, that kind of, this is the thing, like if you, if you think too long and too hard about it, you start seeing sort of like the cracks in it. Chris says she is queen and pope, but raised as children for the role, made idle by their power. Yeah. Um, Aaron says not only a damsel, but um, was the real hero of the story and a male ego couldn't handle it. 
Yeah. Michelle says uh, there were women knights, but they were blink and you miss it. Yeah. Yeah, there was that one woman who kind of like led the charge with something, but you're right. Yeah. Um, and Aaron says, and the priory is the counter religion. That were all women as well, though. Yeah. So that was like an interesting take uh, that I had. But um, I think because the relationships were so strong, even Loth and Kit, their camaraderie, their, you know, broship. Um, was really, really well done. And I think these characters have their best moments when they are exploring relationships. And we just only kind of like skimmed the surface with that. Lisa, since you are our resident romantic with alongside sort of how I appreciate books as well, what do you think could have been done and what relationships would you like to have seen explored more in this book instead of some of these sub quest side plots, you know? Ugh. Um, well, I, I really liked the stuff with Ian and Sabran. Um, I still think there could have been more of a relationship building in it. And um, they kissed, they're in love forever. What? No. I... Yeah. <laughs> um, but like, I kind of like, like you said, I thought there was going to be something with Loth and Tane mm -hmm. and like, she kind of hinted at it. And then it just, nothing ever happened. Like both of their characters kind of got sidelined for most of the story. So yeah, I don't know. I, I, I thought something with them could have been good, but I don't know. Just, just More. characterization. If, if they'd done anything better, if she had done anything better building the characters, I think it would have been a lot better, but yeah. I mean, I, I really loved his friendship with Kit and I, I was pretty upset when, he died. So uh, I don't Aaron's know. saying he straight up got fridged. <laughs> yeah, he did. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and you're right. Like even in uh, Escalon, the, the daughter, what was the, what was her name? Was she first lady. What was she called? There was some, some like sort of um, subterfuge, but like some intrigue there, like the dance. You're like, okay, there's just like, I don't know, ways to, have fun with it. But because uh, Samantha Shannon's so good in, with that part of the relationship, but like I would have loved to have seen more of an ex uh, exploration with Sabran and Iad. Iad's wor worried that her cover's going to get blown. That's huge. Sabran has worn a mask of having it together for so long. How is she able to explore her vulnerability with Iad for the first time and remain safe and in charge? The dynamic between leader, uh, what is it? The submissive and the, the one in power. And then kind of like Iad learning how strong she is and not telling Sabran what she wants to hear. And that's building the trust between them. The Donamata, thank you, uh, Michelle, was the princess. Such a good character. It would have been great to have had her perspective too and then have Loth go to be rogue to help her. Yes, yes, dominant. Thank you, Morpheus. Um, yeah, exploring sort of the ins and outs of that so that when Iad finally um, is removed from the situation and Sabran finds out she's not who she says she is or has these mage sorceress powers, the betrayal that Sabran felt with that, like that could have been explored so much more as well. This is such a fascinating relationship that we have here. And it, we, it was, you did, it didn't have the, the space and the depth for it to be explored. Uh, loyalty versus yes people says Chris. Yeah. Aaron says, it felt like Samantha Shannon is fantastic at building characters and relationships, but not too strong at creating a strong plot for them to be a part of that, um, for them to be a part of that isn't bloated. I think that's what we're trying to say. Yeah, great setup, not great execution. So good at setup that the whole thing's a bloody setup. <laughs> the setup stacked on setups. And then you're like, Bleh. it was too much. So that's, uh, yeah, a relationship I would have liked to have seen more of. Uh, I think it humanized Nicolay's, a guy who we kind of hate, but how he reflects upon who he was when he had, you know, the love of his life there, those moments humanized him. I just didn't care enough about Nicolay's to give a single shit with it. Um, him trying to search for Trude, 
him not putting it together that, you know, he was responsible for her husband getting murdered, beaten to death, all of these sorts of things. Kind of just skimmed through it a bit. Um, I also really liked some of Samantha Shannon's language. She, I know we've had, kind of talked about if it's flowery, if it was um, too much. She had some one-liners, single sentences that like packed such a punch. I'd be reading it and go, ooh, ooh, that was good. Uh, I went through Goodreads to collect some people's favorite quotes from that. We have some of the following. All the world is a cage in a young girl's eyes. No woman should be made to fear that she was not enough. That's the problem with stories, child. The truth in them cannot be weighed. And we may be small and we may be young, but we will shake the world for our beliefs. It's just, yeah, it's just some of her beautiful writing where you're just like, oh, it's just a plot development. That was, I mean, she's, I like, she's a good writer. It's just, yeah, just getting that plot happening. Aaron says one plot thread ends abruptly and another takes its place. I have been nitpicking and I did like the book and its characters, but man, there are some inconsistencies. So let's talk about some of these inconsistencies. What were some of the plot holes? What were some of the, oh, play the board. Hello, play the board. Says the language was probably my favorite part. Yeah, explore more about that. Play the board. What did you give it out of five? Would love to hear from you. Uh, I'm actually going to change something in the document. I said I liked the first half of the book, but then I remember that the first eight chapters were really confusing. So I'm going to call it, I liked the second act. And the second act is where we know all the characters, wheels are in motion. We have that sort of plot development. And then you have, you know, the resolution and the resolution went way too quickly. Uh, I'm in the Discord reading some of the comments that are happening here. Um, we're still a bit confused about what happened with Tane. <laughs> uh, Lisa says, I don't understand. I went back and I read it again thinking I'd missed something and it didn't even help. <laughs> Darian says the entire pl uh, plot point of her having the jewel stitched in herself was horseshit. <laughs> Aaron says, yeah, it was. Like, do you put that into an infant or a toddler? and not notice that you have a fist-sized jewel in your side and then somehow had your body go through puberty with it? Does the author not know how biology and anatomy works? Atanomy, yay, dyslexic. Anatomy works? She had a character who knew anatomy. <laughs> I love it when we rant. That, half of that was all caps. Uh, Aaron, do you want to try and wrap your head around the plot point that we're scratching our head over? And that's that Tane, so, out of nowhere, has the stone, the jewel, in her. Yeah, because until she was, like, in her exile, she doesn't really, like, mention, like, oh, she has just an old scar wound when she's training, but doesn't make mention of it. And then it's only until she's in exile on the, the Feather Island, it's like, oh, you have a giant, you know, jewel, magical jewel it's inside your, your side. <laughs> right. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, yeah, it's like, Okay, they, she pretty much says she has it in her since she was a child, like a small child, like small enough to still remember her parents. So it's like maybe what, three, four years old? So that's like a toddler. It's like that jewel doesn't change sizes, but your body does. Do, like, was it hidden how, in her or did she, word of, yeah. the, word of the stream, did she birth it? Did she grow it organically? Was it gifted yeah. to... Yeah, it's like, did what, did they just cut her open when she was, like, small somehow, put it inside of her and make sure she doesn't notice? It's like... Who said and then that she's it was her fate? Yeah. yeah but... And then it's like, she grows up. Her body's going to change as bodies do. <laughs> so it's like, yeah. It That's did... one of the inconsistencies that I was kind of... Because how to. do how was the other stone found? It was just within the priory. It was, it was in yeah, the it was in the, box. The, the crypt. Yeah. The... the, the, the the box, the real box had the key that was for the crypt that held the stone, which also is a bunch of like weird little MacGuffin plot points. Yeah. Because Loth didn't really have to go there. He only had to go there so that he could then get the box and then come back. It's literally all he, he's basically the messenger boy who gets keeps the plot rolling. But then doesn't even deliver the message. 
so. He never gets a chance. He's six out of hand. He's like, my life's a day jewelry. He's literally Ralph in the bus. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So that, that there's a plot hole. Darian says, oh. I have a plot hole for you guys. I'd love everyone else to think of a plot hole to share as well. Um, we can go through it. Oh, before you jump in, Darian, though, uh, Chris says there is a scar. I think it was put there. Um, Sprinkle says Tane is like Diva from the Fifth Element. I like that. Um, Vaden says it's an appendix, but with magic powers to save the world. Pylang says, was hot on the stone an innie or an Audi? No one knows. Uh, Chris says, I thought the stone was going to be under the orange tree like a seed, but I was wrong. Uh, also, play the board just before we jump back in. Play the board has delivered uh, their score, three out of five. The language was my favorite part. I had to restart so many times and I rate the entire thing worth a reread and I hope to rank it higher upon reread. This is the thing. Should you have to reread a book to be able to... Um, appreciate it I think it should be good the first time and that if you have to restart it over and over and over again for it to be worth it then is it worth it then can it be considered a good book is this a rhetorical question or we don't know someone might say something about it uh, Lisa says I reread books that I love this won't be one of them Pylang says, no. Great, cool. I did have someone answer my question. I like that. Lisa says, but seriously, can someone answer me on the ending with Tane? She went to a tree and laid down, woke with a butterfly in her hand, laying in a pool of blood, and then we hear nothing else. What the fuck? <laughs> um, I, what? I think we just look it up. What happened to Tane? There you go. At the end of Priory, it's like, googled it is very in the end tane is restored as dragon rider iad and sabran agree to meet in 10 years that's not fucking romance that's not romantic that's such an anti-climate well we're both very important people so we'll do our important people during the best fucking years of our life and then when we're old we'll cuddle no iad has been chosen to be the prioress and sabran has a queendom to rule oh and there's this side plot where grand crest tries to snag the throne away from sabran okay so this is some sort of wordpress thing what the fuck happens tane went to the island as sort of a spiritual journey and yeah saw her ancestor naporo the butterfly is implied to be naporo as well i'm on a reddit page someone has read it at least 15 times and they're still clueless <laughs> um, the blood is meant to imply that Naporo has returned the orb back into Tane's body, thus answering the question of holy crap, who cuts open a kid and implants a big orb? <laughs> Turns out the spirit, it's the spirit of Naporo watching over her ancestors, ensuring that the orb stays within her line. That was so poorly addressed. That was so poorly addressed. Most of them not even realizing it until it's absolutely necessary. Put it in a fucking box next time. Oh, but then it's like uh, Loth's family through their ancestry legacy knows the location of the sword. It's just so much. Um, she's not dead. The author said she might explain it if she ever writes a sequel, but there's a reason why Tane's story ended like that. Uh, okay. Does that help? Reddit. Reddit. Why not put the stone in the mulberry tree? She's already attached to that. They already know that that's Tane's lineage. Oh my God, just pick it up on the way. Oh my God. And it's she's the only one who could pick it up like sword in the fucking stone or like when she gets close, the, the gem in the mulberry tree starts pulsating. Yes, Michelle, that's how you can improve on that. I'm getting, it's getting, we're getting heated a little bit. We're getting into this. Um, the author left the ending open in case you want to write a sequel, says Black Belt, got it. Uh, Dodger says, look, I haven't read the book, but after hearing all of this now, I want to. I mean, hey, she blow dried her hair. Yeah, <laughs> she did. She did. Thank you, Duga. Or is it Duja? Is it a soft G? Um, Aaron says, I think a reread is only good to see the clues that were dropped on the first read, but not to reread to understand it overall. Well said. I get so excited when someone plants all these seeds that you don't know until the end. 
Um, hello, Clinta Mortem. Thank you so much for the follow. Welcome to our book chat. We're talking about the Priory of the Orange Tree. We're going full spoilers. So if you haven't read it, we're spoiling it for you. But it's 886 pages. So if you're not thinking about reading a book that big, stick around. Um, Tane is one giant plot hole wrapped in a MacGuffin. <laughs> uh, um, Black Belt says, I read two theories about Tane. One, the butterfly is the spirit of Naporo, putting the gem back as her way to protect it. Two, it's her first blood that will revive the, the, the mulberry tree. Again, it's vague for a potential sequel. Ah, uh, Dugu, thank you. You've probably told me, but I'm not caught up with the chat because I'm reading out some things. Toaster Poster says, I'll reread because I want to visit this universe. It has nicest characters, nice-ish characters and cool lore. What did you give it out of five again, Toaster Poster? Um, STS gifted a sub to Dugur. Thank you so much, STS, for making people feel warm and welcome in this community. Lisa says, why would she need it back in her? It makes no sense. <laughs> Oh, I love Michelle's theory about the um, the gem being in the mulberry tree. I really liked that. The priory orange tree, you know, gives the powers. This one gives the stone. I liked that. Play the board says, I don't really want to reread it. So that's a strike against it. But I would be curious to find out if there are things I would appreciate better upon rereading. I ain't rereading this one. I can tell you right now. Um... Michelle says there's so many ways to use great existing law to problem solve the back half of this book. That's the thing. She's already kind of said all this stuff, but then the second half of the book adds more to either complicate what we already know unnecessary or to then explain it further unnecessary. You're right. Toaster Poster gives it a three out of five. Darian, I'm so sorry we got sidetracked with that one. You got a plot hole for us. Over to you. No worries. Um, before I get into the plot hole, you just made me re remember something. Yeah. The entire yeah. thing with Iad and Sabran meeting back up in 10 years. That's the end of Pirates of the Caribbean with Will and Elizabeth. Those two remind you of Will and Elizabeth? No, that's the same ending. They, meet back, they have to meet back up in 10 years' time, you know? Ah. Uh... <laughs> All right. The plot point. Um, the, all the stuff with the Golden Empress, where she forces Nicolae's Ruse to figure out the location of the mysterious island of, is it Comorido? I can't remember the name. Uh, yeah, something like that. Yeah. So Comorido. he's, you know, he, you know, he's being threatened with death and everything. Yeah. And he has to, like, work on all, all this deciphering. Oh, At but the he also time, falls in love, or Leia, Leia falls in love with him. Don't forget yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's fine. At, at the same time, there's the monk on Feather Island who just happens to know the location and just tells Tani. And <laughs> when we get there, we realize that the Golden Empress also has like a monk within her crew because he was the one. Yeah. yeah. Like he was from Feather Island as well. So presumably he would have known the location as well. It's, so like the entire stakes of trying to decipher the location from like all these mismatched pieces of lore. Was that even necessary if you had a scholar from Feather Island who probably would have known it? Because it seemed like common. The way it was presented was like it was common knowledge for the, the brothers of the island to know this information, right? Yes and no. I got, there were so many things happening at the same time with like th six different ways to get there. But then... This person knew that person. It was so hard. I I was listening to it be like, you know what? Just tell me what happens. Just tell me what the solution is because the how we're getting there is so hard. I just yeah, need the like, results at this at this stage. Yeah, yeah. It, it was just like it the, just put in that scholar on the island who was part of the crew. To me, kind of undoes all those chapters of them having to solve it. That's that's how I felt. Yeah. No, you're right. You're right. That didn't make any sense. It didn't yeah. make sense. <laughs> and they left an the unresolved plot point of, you know, this missing section of the carving on the mulberry tree that yep. has, you know, they just left that unresolved, yep. which was just unsatisfying. Well, yeah, they they talked up this mulberry tree so much. Nicolay's entire purpose is to build an elixir 
And then it's like, well, I'll get it from the dragons because the dragons live forever. Well, no, there's also the mulberry tree. And it's been known that if you, you know, eat from the mulberry tree, you actually get full life. And then they get there and it's like, psych, it did it once and then it died. And you're like, what? Yeah, and, <laughs> and the Hawthorn tree also gives immortality because that was a gift that Kaliba got. Kaliba got, yeah. But as soon as Kaliba yeah. got it, it was like, we're not doing this again. Yeah, so the pirate is the, the the orange tree is the only one that gives a power and like that's not immortality and it's not immortality. It it's just yeah. the fire, yeah, and it's yeah. got an it's got a expiration date, yeah. Yeah, so they they kind of diversified, you know. Each tree does different things. Not two trees give immortality. The whole fucking tree was pointless. I like what Michelle said. It's like put the stone in the tree, make it make sense. Um, but they, they just, they just, un, they made that whole thing unnecessary to me. And because it felt unnecessary, I tuned out a little bit. Um, see Kate, by the way, it's lovely to have you in here. Uh, Aaron then says, and how, uh, and somehow carved a huge historical story on the side of a tree, the mulberry tree, which was dead. Uh, Michelle says, dude, Nicolay's mutilates the dragon and does nothing with what he took. He just tortures this dragon because he felt was owed it. He was owed it. This is the thing. Nicolay, and then he like threw Tane under a bus, got his uh, Tane's friend executed because they were trying to deliver his granddaughter's husband to him. Like Nicolay's is the worst. He's the fucking worst. He And he lost an arm. He lost half an arm. That's it. He lost half an arm. But Nicolay sucks. Uh, Vaden, what's your plot hole? All right. Um, basically, the plot hole was, it's more like just something that wasn't really developed as much as it should have been. Is like in a lot of stories, like immortality is like the all important thing, right? Like everyone wants to be immortal. It's great. Living forever is amazing. But like in here, like there's ways to be immortal, but there's really, the characters don't seem to have really much motivation for it. Like there's nothing showing their backstory or anything that explains why they really want to be immortal outside of just like, hey, it's cool. Like it's really strange that they didn't, yeah, we weren't able to give a strong. There's so yeah. much lore. But there's no law about trying to be immortal. You're right. That doesn't make any sense, especially yeah. with the nameless one being um, trapped away for a thousand years. And I think it was even Iad and Sabran saying, look, we don't want to solve this problem just so our next generation has to fix it. If immortality is a card that's being played at all, yeah, that 100% would be... And there's pirates, and there's fucking pirates, and Nicolas has made his entire life out of it. Yeah. Yeah, the Golden Empress didn't really add much to the story, unfortunately. Pointless. Like, the whole thing was pointless. Yeah. Make it the uh, the Psychonese or the Escarlan. Like, tie it back to the Escarlan people somehow. Don't add a whole new division. Like, I don't know. It just, mm, very confusing. Um... Aaron says, uh, Kaliba implies that the tree had made her immortal and gave her the magic she had, but she's also a dragon too. She's already immortal. Oh my God. That makes no fucking sense. <laughs> she's the dragon. She is a dragon. So was she originally a dragon? Was she birthed? No, she did this whole story about how she was born from the star rot, star rot. She shapeshifts into a dragon, uh, but... But I, but then the whole lore, which was explained three times, is that the dragons were able to shape shift. So it sounded like she was a dragon first that turned into a woman. If that's not the case, that's dumb. Catch twenty two says, "Why does this sound like six stories all rolled into one oversized novel?" Ding 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 ding. There it is. There it is. Um. Darian was talking about in the document about some of the points that, that didn't work. Pacing was weird. Could it be the bit a single, a trim single book or a duology or a trilo, tri, sorry, triology? Mm, it is a triology. Mm -mm. Good recovery. Still shit words. Uh, a trilogy instead. Uh, I want to talk about the, the obvious reveal. Let's talk about Iad's mother being killed by the prioress. Uh, the prioress obviously wanting to get rid of uh, Iad's mother, who was the next in line to take over, was the threat, blamed it on uh, Kaliba because Kaliba was the outsider and it was easy to kind of dust it under the rug and punish this woman. Um, 
that one was a little obvious. You have the the whole trope where you work for an organization and then you realize that maybe you're not on the right side. Maybe you're not the good people. Um, who else saw that plot reveal coming? Uh, did it feel obvious? Was it necessary? Did, did, did it add to anything? We can skip it. Uh, yes? Uh, yeah, like, I mean, I saw it coming, but, like, it was also just that it felt like a weak motivation. Of, like, her, like, she wanted to get rid of the power rest because she felt like the power rest was focused so much on the world itself and not, like, just, you know, trying to keep the power destroyed the dragons. But because the power rest wanted, the previous power rest wanted to, like, you know, protect, protect the entire world, not just the parts that they could. And so she's like, oh, well, you, you, we don't always stretch too thin, so I'm going to kill you, I guess. It just it feels too weak of my motivation to, like, do something as strong as kill your progress. It's I know. And then it's like Iyad should have exposed her, should have been the one that kind of was able to kind of get revenge on the actual prioress. Like, the, the way that it – things could have been cleaned up a lot easier than it was. Because then Calibra and the Prioress have a battle that only Tane somehow sees. Ugh, the whole thing. Um, mm. Having the witch as a secondary villain doesn't work in this book. Darian, I would love to explore that. Calibra as a secondary villain that decides to turn on everything that she made so that she could worship the Nameless One when he returns. Darian, these are your notes. <laughs> um, yeah, no, well, I mean, one thing is, like, this is a reinterpretation of whatever, of St. George and the Dragon, but also they're merging in Arthurian mythology because Ascalon, Excalibur, um, Caliber making it, it's um, the Lady of the Lake or whatever. She's going to present Arthur with the sword. Um, so, but just... Having it, and like, I feel like if they did this as like a trilogy, she could have been introduced as of as you know as a character in a second book or a third book, and fleshed it out just the way they dumped it in here. It just mm -hmm. doesn't work, and like, <laughs> there are so many things in her that just don't work. She's sending Sabran visions for whatever reason, and her her plan is to to what to supplant Sabran and say. Oh, um, I made peace with the nameless one. We're going to rule together. You think the entire population is going to, with this very strict um, dogma, is going to just accept this overnight? That, you know, your saint incarnate, who is, you know, the symbol standing up against the nameless one, is just going to say, yeah, we, I've, I've decided to, um, to serve him now. Mm. That's... It yeah, didn't. What would actually yeah. be really, really cool, I liked the moment where Iad went to Kaliba mm -hmm. and was like, help me learn. It would be yeah. really cool if Kaliba was able to say, I know the truth about your mother. I was ostracized. I was sort of like sentenced away because the prioress and like you, you have that switch of not necessarily like authority, but mentor. And that Kaliba actually ends up, oh no, not ends up, starts off as a powerful ally, like your Gandalf in that situation where she's super powerful. She's able to train Iad, able to untap her powers, um, was wrongly accused for something the Prioress did. The Prioress was the actual evil entity out of this orange tree area. Um, uh, Kaliba gets the fruit, is able to free the girls, um, teaches them about the ways of dream traveling and stuff like that. <gasps> Sage is raiding. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we're getting a raid. Oh, we're going to have to time out that conversation just for a second. We've got secret raid happening right now. Uh, Sage, thank you so much, my sweet, for dropping on by and sending the crew. What an amazing raid we got happening here. So many first-time chatters. A big thank you to Indium Sodium, Janzo CSN, uh, Derek Cleek. Derek Lee Ketchum, took me a second. Uh, Guardian84 Nova, thank you for using your Prime to sub. I really appreciate that. 
Uh, Jane W. Combe, thanks for the follow. Julian992, thanks for the follow. Roaming Hydra, thanks for the follow. Uh, Azuriel3050, thank you as well. Um, wow. STS has just gifted five subs to the community as a bit of a welcome to everyone. Regards, Darren Reen, Elephron, P. Matthew, and Glass Dagger 22 all just scored a gifted sub. Julie Mitchie, thanks for the follow too. Wow, let's give oh wow vaden vaden just gifted 10 subs to the community as a welcome wowie oh everyone knows how to make everyone feel so welcome here um ima 367 just got gifted a sub and so did mother cussa great name the real brandon pace not the fake one damn it randy who's always in trouble gnomish arcane darius draft Jail, Jai loves Oprah, not Jail Oves. Well done, Maud. Sangria Goldfish got one. Helonian did two. Blue Wings 10. You all got gifted a sub. Thanks to Vaden. So if you got one, drop him a thanks in the chat there. Uh, chit. Well, <laughs> nearly, nearly sore. <laughs> Chi Towns 69. Uh, Rat Attack Shark, thank you so much for the follows. <laughs> Appreciate that. I was going to say, uh, can we give a shout out to Sage and see what, not Sage, and see what she was um, doing? Oh, they were just chatting. Just chatting, huh? Clark Eckernstein, thanks for the follow too. Wow, look at all these first time chatters. Thai Chai Latte saying, hey, nice, hello. G Town 69 saying, sub with bombs. Um, yeah, look at all these subs happening here. Thank you, Guardian84 Nova, by the way. Oh, not Sage says, have an excellent stream. Thank you, my love. We are at an hour and a half into our Wednesday evening book club. So for those that don't know, I run a book club with Geek Bomb every month. The first two Wednesdays of the month, we tackle an entire book. So the first Wednesday, we'll talk about the first half of the book, the characters, what we're thinking. Um, try and predict what's going to happen but this is the second Wednesday so we have finished the book the book being the Priory of the Orange Tree 884 pages or something ridiculous like that uh, so we are going full spoilers talking about this book if you've read it hit me up in the comments and tell me what you gave it out of five. Oh my goodness I'm still getting notifications coming in so if you see your name pop up thank you again uh Ra Red Wine 215, thanks for the follow. That one snuck in. I didn't get to see it. <coughs> and if you're wondering what uh, the noise is, the book club has a Patreon. And if you sign up for the um, lowest tier, $5 a month, you get to join in the Discord to talk about the book club on both the days. And then on the last, fuck, so many book clubs. We also do, I teamed up with Nerdist and we do a second book the second half of the month, which we'll talk about over two Wednesdays as well. And then we do a sneaky little Discord group hangout, which isn't recorded. It's just all of us talking more personal things, talking about the book uh, and all that fun stuff. So there's a lot of cool perks for five bucks, especially if you love books. Um, if you need accountability and you want to have a cool community to read nerdy sci-fi and fantasy, this is the place for you. Uh, but I got Darian on the call at the moment talking about plot holes. Um, try is the main point. Oh, I try to eat emotes. Hi, Gory. Thank you for dropping the Patreon in there for everyone as well. Uh, regards, Darren says, thanks, STS, for the sub. Uh, oh, yeah, we need a Goodreads. We've got a Goodreads as well if you want to swing on by for the Goodreads because we're choosing our book for the next month too. Gory's lurking. Oh, shit. I didn't get gift what Fuck. <laughs> I am a barely professional streamer. Fantastic. We could do that again. We could do that again, Gory. We would just do it. We can do the lurk now, maybe. It's still not popping up. Gotta love it. Gotta love it. Where is it? Good. Good chat, everyone. Uh, prior of the Orange Tree, talking about what we could do to improve it. I had a theory and then Sage raided. Does anyone know what my theory was? Archie Town, thank you so much for using your prime prime sub to sub sub. Morphinia says, have you decided on the next book already, Maud? Well, in the Discord, uh, in the reading section, that is the Patreon perk, we voted on it. And I think we have a clear winner. I think we have a clear winner. 
Um, one moment, please. Also, if you do read books, tell me what your favorite book is. What kind of genre? What the last thing that you're cut with the current book that you're reading or the one that you just finished? I'd love to hear about them. Um, oh, we got a winner. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. It's locked in. It's official. The month of July. Keeping on with that pride good, goodness. Gideon the Ninth by Tamsin Muir. Gory goes, Gideon! Lesbian necromancers coming this July. Gideon the Ninth, if you got that one. Uh, Cheetown says, The Master and Margarita is my favorite book for sure. Uh, Aaron says, I was too busy comparing this book to Dragon Age in Discord, so I didn't know what your theory could be. It's a, Your theory is pretty good, though. Gory says, I've been trying to get this book in book chat for ages. Michelle says, woohoo, this has been on the TBR list forever. Now, in before Lisa says it, this is an unfinished series. Gideon the Ninth has started, but it has not ended. So we are starting an unfinished series Big disclaimer. Uh, Akoto Roku says, the pandemic has kind of melted my book brain. The last thing I've consumed with the last two Dresden File books. You were with us for those, weren't you? We've covered the first four Dresden File books. Um, and we got things cracking during the pandemic. That's when this came back in full force. Something about uh, Kaliba being a secondary villain. Thank you, Toaster Poster. That's exactly what it was. It was utilizing Kabila, uh, Kaliba, sorry, uh, having Kaliba be the pseudo um, mentor to the protagonist. So having Iad trust in her, uh, divulging what's going on in Innes. Uh, telling her of all the plans, and then it's revealed that Kaliba is not who she says she is. That would be better. Uh, Koto Roku says, uh, oh, Thier talking to Thierry about it because, yeah, they are our diehard Dresden fans. Thierry, I got Thierry onto the series about two and a half years ago, and he's read that all through two and a half times, I believe, if not more, and says, hell yeah, share the Dresden love. Uh, Lisa says, we read the first era Mistborn already. Um, oh, Akoto is talking about the last book of the Dresden Files. Ugh, I know. Uh, Morphinius says the Mistborn series were fantastic as well. Morphinius, yeah, if you check out the Geek Bomb YouTube, we've got, we covered all three of the Mistborn first era trilogy there. So you can check all of that out. Uh, Severand says current favorite is The Slow Regard of Silent Things by Patrick Rothfuss. Wait. This is my favorite part of book club. Say the book. I can probably pull it out of the bookshelf behind me. Um, fun fact about this book, Severand. I teamed up with Patrick Rothfuss to do a live Twitch stream, which I believe the VOD is available on his YouTube mayhaps, uh, to talk about a different perspective that a friend of his brought up about that book, about Ori as a character and how he essentially wrote about something that he didn't even realize could be perceived that way, potentially problematic. And so we did, a, I think, like a two-hour discussion on that book, um, which was really, really cool. Uh, yeah, that was a name drop and a flex in one. Now it's both of them. Rat Attack Shark says, my friend and I have a book club of two working our way through the Wheel of Time audiobooks. I'm on 10 Crossroads of Twilight. Love the audio format. So I don't know if you know this Rat Attack Shark, but um, because of the TV series that's come out on Prime Video, Rosamund Pike, who plays Moraine, voices, she's revoiced the first book. Now, having listened to Mistborn Trilogy, that's enough Michael Kramer to last me in a lifetime and it's what put me off the wheel of time. I love this. I love this game. I love this game. What else you got, guys? What else you got? What else you got? I'm not going to run two different sci-fi fantasy book clubs and not do that. The best part is I read majority of, I listen to the majority of my books on Audible so I don't even have physical copies of majority of my stuff. But I don't know. This is a fun game. Um, Morphinia says, oh, I've got that one as well. It's sweet. 
Play the board says, I feel like I found my people. Yes, welcome, welcome. Triscon says, I went 40 minutes over while talking to Pat. Yeah, Pat and I have a tendency to do that. Uh, Severin says, oh, I'm going to have to look up the VOD. Yeah, yes. Bogload, good to hear from you. The last thing that I read was where the wild things grow. Were you seven? Let's be real. If you do need a book club and you need a place to read, good shit. This is where it is. Uh, Dugas says, last book was Seven and a Half Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle. God, that sounds like my jam. Tell me about that book. Morphinia says, pardon, I don't think I bought tickets to the gun show. No, it's just a preview. Uh, Cash 22 says, the complete works of Edgar Allan Poe. Lovely. Um, yeah, Rat Attack Shark says, my friend started that format too. She was disappointed that they weren't more by her. That's what's stopping me. I will listen to all of Wheel of Time if it's Rosamund Pike and her beautiful deep voice. I just can't do Michael Kramer. I've got the second book on Audible. I have the first four books in physical. I will do it. I just barely read physical books anymore. I've got to get better at that, says the girl. Why are you? This is why I've got muscles <laughs> trying to read this book the last two weeks. Uh, Akoto says, where's your copy of the similar... Sim Silmarillion, goodness, sorry. Though that's the, oh no, this is who I am fantasy book. No, I didn't get there on that one. I haven't read all the Lord of the Rings. I tried to read Fellowship when I was 18 and I lasted two chapters. We read The Hobbit for Nerdist though. All the videos are up on Nerdist's YouTube. Just search The Hobbit. Um... Also, Duga, did you set, tell me if it was a soft or a hard G? Is it Duga or Duja? I think it's Duga. I think it's Duga. Um, Aaron says, yes, I love the Rosmond version. So good. Severin just followed. Welcome. We are your new book family. Uh, Catch me too says, how did they not charge you a baggage fee for the weight? <laughs> Seriously. I had it in my hand luggage to read it on the plane. Silly. I regret bringing it. Uh, Rat Attack Shark says, I've really gotten into it though because I can definitely picture it uh, like it's a movie in my head. I was actually driving home from a road trip and I missed my exit. <laughs> I had to come around to myself and I realized it. I was so engrossed in the story. I love it when that happens. It's a soft G. It's Dooja. It's Dooja. Wait, wait, wait. Hard G. I had to think. <laughs> Dorizo's here. Everyone, if you've got the Dorito emoji, drop it now. Dorito, Dorito emoji. There it is. B, B, B. Darcy's here. Darcy's my brother. Darcy is writing his own fantasy book series. Uh, and he's finished the first book. And he's drafting out the second book. Dart, we've just read The Priory of the Orange Tree. And it's a single standalone book. The issue is they tried to put way too much into it and did unnecessary plot twists just for the sake of the twist, but they weren't sort of like thought out or executed sort of well. There were a couple, but there were just a little bit too many in that regard. Uh, D Mikado said, oh, you subscribed for 21 months and it's been a 21 month streak. Fantastic. Uh, you just finished your second book plot. It's very exciting. Da do you want to talk a little bit about like your book trilogy is like the political intrigue of Mass Effect meets sort of like the training structure of Hogwarts meets the class and race system of Lord of the Rings. I kind of just did it for you. Duga says 848 convoluted pages too long, apparently. <laughs> oh, well. Darcy says, I can't see anything. I got like 10 ads playing. Dude. Don't complain about helping me pay my rent. Supportive brother, my ass. This is what, oh, Vaden just gifted a sub to Dart because of it. Darcy, you don't even sub to your own sister's channel and you complain about the ads. <laughs> but welcome, Darcy. Welcome to the community. Pablo V89, thank you so much for the follow. Uh, alrighty, let's talk about the next books that we're going to be reading. Um... So just a little refresher, two book clubs a month. The first two weeks are for Geek Bomb. The second two weeks are for Nerdist. Uh, we do the Geek Bomb book club right here on Twitch and the VODs are available on the YouTube. I sound like I'm talking about the drugs, the YouTube. Um, 
the first half we talk about characters and the plot and what we're thinking about the book. The second half is full spoilers. So today was a full spoiler since we are wrapping up talking about The Priory of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon. Uh, Darcy says, I'm back. Oh, thank you. It was Vaden who gifted you a sub, Darcy. So give Vaden a thank you. Sorry, what is next book? God, patience, young Padawan. I'm going to read Boglo's comment before just so he has to learn to wait. Actually, I forgot. I did read Ando's autobiography, The Happiest Refugee. Not a big reader, but that got some onion cutting going. But yes, I was seven when I read um, WTWTG, Good Memories. Thank you, Vader. God, thank you, Vader. Uh, Lisa says, Gideon the Ninth by Tasman Muir. Yeah, she's just cutting to the chase. Right, so what I was trying to say is the next book we're reading for Geek Bomb is that for July, but the next book that we're reading for Nerdist, so the next two weeks, next Wednesday, we'll need to read the first half of the book. The Wednesday following, we'll need to finish it. Nerdist is now splitting it to two times a week, a month. Oh, where the wild things grow. Thanks, Morpheus. Um, so that every single Wednesday is jam-packed full of good book, split into two halves. We're reading The Son of Achilles by Madeline Miller. Madeline Miller, we've already done a book for Geek Bombs Book Club, wasn't it? Or we, did we do it for Nerdist? I can't recall. So, uh, we did um, Circe. It was for Nerdist. We did Circe by Madeline Miller. Uh, Circe was fantastic. It's a retelling of Greek mythology um, with, with Circe. And it's fantastic. Same author. This is The Son of Achilles. And so it's more talking about not Perseus. Who is it? Is it Perseus? Aaron says, I'm happy we get two weeks per one to discuss. Gives us a chance to digest each book club book. Exactly. Uh, Morphine says, i got to read The Song of Achilles soon. you got to start that book right now because we're talking about the first half of it next week. So that's for Nerdist Book Club. And then for Geek Bomb Book Club, we are doing Gideon the Ninth, which as our community has been calling it, lesbian necromancers which is going to be a very big change of pace i'm actually relieved the poppy war was uh winning for like the last week the poppy war was ahead uh if you're wondering where this poll is it's on the reading section of the discord half the discord is completely open to the public where we nerd out about a bunch of stuff but specifically the chat for reading for book club is a patreon perk only five bucks a month the choices were A Darker Shade of Magic by V.E. Schwab, Jade City by Fonda Lee, The Poppy War by R.F. Quang, and that was winning. Quang, sorry. Uh, Black Sun by Rebecca Roanhorse, The Fifth Season by N.K. Jemison. Funny story, mum hit up Darcy and I in the group chat today saying, hey, has anyone read N.K. Jemison? Um... <laughs> Anthony Carvoni just appeared in the chat, says, hi, I heard we're talking about lesbian necromancers. Yeah, that, Anthony, you are so on brand. That definitely feels like your jam. Uh, that is our next book for book club, Gideon the Ninth by Taz, uh, Tamsin, 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 Tamsin Muir. Uh, and the results were Gideon the Ninth, uh, coming in the most and then it was the poppy war and then it was a tie between the fifth season and a darker shade of magic but because we've just read the priory of the orange tree which was very very heavy on fantasy dragon law different cultures across the world uh i'm very relieved to explore lesbian necromancers i think that'll be a lovely change of pace uh kp dubs are oh, you back hello uh says yes it won it was my last minute campaign that pushed it over the top thank you kp dubs for doing that one uh oh that's right it's uh achilles and uh patrocles that is um the song of achilles wow we got a lot of same sex loving happening this one has it uh song of achilles is gonna have a bit of man on man action and then lesbian necromancers oh what a time to be alive taste the rainbow as they say wicked kenda says, huh, I just finished The Poppy War. I'm on the second book now. Wicked Kendra, what did you think of it? What did you think of that book? Aaron says, just checked. The third book in the Gideon series comes out this September. July, August, September. Interesting. 
Morphinia says, I read the Broken Earth Saga by NK. It was very interesting. It had beautiful moments. Toaster Poster says, Poppy War was brutal. That trilogy hurts. Oh, okay. Play the Board says, if you can, get the audio book. Gideon is even better in audio. Got it in audio. Hell yeah. Uh, yes, Boglo, that was a Skittles reference. Well done. Um, what's everyone else reading or read at the moment? Now that we know we've got The Song of Achilles next in the next fortnight, the next two weeks, and then Gideon the 9th, the first half of July. Um, we have a spreadsheet that is pinned in the reading discussion if you are a Patreon backer. Basically, any book that you love that you wanted to recommend, we put it in this spreadsheet with information like, Who's it by? The author, uh, if it's a part of a series or if it's standalone, if it's a little book, if it's medium or if it's a chunky boy. It's so big. It's just unnecessary. Uh, Black Belt says there's going to be a fourth Gideon book. Um, Lisa, oh, Lisa says there's also another Gideon book coming out maybe next year. I don't know if there's going to be more after that. SDS says Le Chonk. It's what Zelda is. It's what the book is. Hey, Steel, Steel Lungs. How are you? A little dancing emoji then. We're just talking about the books. We got the next two, we got the next month's worth of books sorted. Uh, two books in the next month. If you are on Goodreads, there is a reading challenge. Um, we all kind of keep tabs on how we're going with said challenge. If you are part of Geek Bomb and Nerdist Book Clubs, you're at least reading two books a month, which is really cool. Duga says, that's it. I'm starting a band called Lesbian Necromancers. If there are not lesbian necromancers in there, that is just some false advertising that will only disappoint people. KP Dub says, Priory would fall under that lordy comment <laughs> for the pet category. I still I still laugh at that. It was o OMG Firefox that sent me that meme and I had to do a TikTok about it because it was so funny. She said that the vet actually gave that to her to talk about how overweight her pet was. Oh, amazing. If you don't know what I'm talking about, scroll through some TikTok vids. Seal Lung says, oh, nice. I'm finishing the Wheel of Time series, so I've been looking for something else. Oh, how did you go with that? What a slog. Are you reading it or listening to it? Cherry says, I recommend the Critical Role novel, Kith and Kin by uh, Marik Nijkamp. Nijkamp. Got to get these names right. It's very important. Um, all for all my book clubians that like to read more than two books a month. What else have you been reading? What are some other recommendations? What are some other good books that you've been getting stuck into? Steel Lung says I've been listening for the past three years. That's a lot of Michael Kramer. It's a lot of Michael Kramer. Is Geek Bomb Book Club doing Gideon in two consecutive months or doing something in between like you did for the last series? It was a bit of a trial and error. We did all the Shadow and Bone series consecutively and it was just a little bit too much at once. So we feel that breaking it up with a book cleanser in between is a good thing and that's what we did when we did the Mistborn first era trilogy. Um, Nos, uh, Nos, Nosfer oh, Nos, Nosferatu. Wow. Nos for Atu, Atu, uh, by Joe Hill is a great book. It's a different take on a vampire story. Yeah, because Nosferatu is lead speak for that. That's cool. Catch-22 says, I've been reading, reading Catch-22 for the second time. I forgot how difficult to read it is. So I follow a, an account called Hot Dudes Reading. I'm predictable. Uh, there's a guy at an airport who is really insanely gorgeous reading ca uh, Catch-22. So if he can do it. Lisa says, I'm slowly working my way through S by J.J. Abrams. Ooh, what's that? Michelle says, last month I read Star Wars Visions, Ronan by Emma Miko Candon. It was great. It was a great, super different take on Star Wars. Baden says, I just finished The Wives of... Oh, what? You did it? You did it. Baden just finished Wise Man's Fear. I got Darcy into The Name of the Wind and The Wise Man's Fear. Uh, that's a big one. Did you listen to it, Vaden, when you're doing your walks? I was also planning on listening to Arabian Nights soon. Toaster Poster says, I got this weird book about games I can play in my head. It sounded weird enough for a buy. Oh, fill us in on that. Nosferatu is the license plate. <laughs> the main villain's car. <laughs> that's awesome. Oh, we did the first three books? No, I think we did the first four books of Dresden Files, Thierry, but we fell off. 
Uh, Dorito says, sorry, I went back and watched what I missed while getting ads. Thanks again, Vader. Vaden. But yeah, my book is Mass Effect Politics, kind of like Hogwarts set in Middle Earth with superpowers. Book two is more of a Game of Thrones feel. Darcy knows what he likes and he blended it all in one. Uh, Dragon's, uh, Dragon's Ghost. Hello, Dragon's Ghost. Said, I just finished the Murderbot series, which is great. Patrick Rothfuss mentioned Murderbot to us. I bought the first book. It's only like a two and a half hour listen. So if we just need like a nice tight and bright kind of book for in between i really want to get st stuck into that duga says the murder of mr wickham by claudia gray we stand claudia gray over here we've done the lost stars we did bloodlines so two of her star wars books i've bought the third one the one that she did for the high republic um i love claudia gray as an author i think she's fantastic i didn't know about that one so consider me into it KP Dub says, I bought a player's handbook. The last time I read it was 1986. That's the year I was born. Baden says, no, I've got the physical books. I read The Name of the Wind, The Wise Man's Fear, and now I'm starting The Slow Regard of Silent Things. Just a heads up about that one. It's not written in the way that those books are. It is very jarring. It is written as if you are Ori. So it's very, very different. Uh, Lisa says, S is kind of multimedia. It's set up as a library book. The two people are writing back and forth in the margins trying to figure out a mystery about the book and author. So you're reading the book and all their notes. That's fascinating. Wow. You can't audio book that one. Aaron says it is, but it goes far off the road, pun intended, with the plot. Book is better as always. Darcy says, did you paint that mod? <laughs> Darcy, yes, I did. Yes, I did. Friends of mine and I did a painting class. I am shit at art and I managed to do this. It was absolutely the best of the group. We did a vote and they voted for my friend Josh who decided to go against the rules and he did a UFO with stick figures getting drawn up and basically wrote in it, we're all fucked. And the art teacher deemed him the winner. I have been bitter about it ever since. And this was what, three months ago now? Anyway, so now it lives forever in my background. Yeah, I had no aliens. Fucking hell. Duga says, same, I read that one because of the uh, Star Wars Claudia Gray books I've loved. Yes. KP Dove says, should have won. Maud was robbed. Absolutely. Uh, what's at the end of the jetty? Oh, look, it's not my best part. It's a little, it's, it's a little, yeah, it doesn't look so good there, does it? Trust you to criticize. Everything else is fantastic. Like, look at that it's look the, the the waves a little bit of an island there's some birds look at that reflection that's supposed to be like a little building a shack uh it's got lighting and i just maybe put maybe went a little bit hard on the lights and i didn't do like a whatever whatever i should have won piling says blue ribbon that painting right <sighs> morphinia says come on aliens on the beach it kind of had to win get out get out Steel Lung says, reminds me of the Punisher movie opening. Yeah. Um, Darcy, what was the last book you read? Uh, I tried to get Darcy into the, um, not The Martian, uh, Project Hail Mary, which is still the um, undisputed champion of Geek Bomb Book Club, the one that had the most fives consecutively. Did you get started in that or have you just been in your own book writing mode? I got a list of 16 on the piano waiting for me to read once book two plot is done. Didn't you say you just finished it? It's on the list with Poppy Walk. Can you get that for me? I want to know what else is on that. Project Hail Mary. Yeah. What else is on it? Hobbit. Check. Did the Hobbit. Wait. Ah, this is my favorite game. Remember? This is my flex. Not only do I have it here, <laughs> but I also have it <laughs> here. I got like old school hand me down second. Look at that. It's like yellow now, but like old school original version. And then the move when the movie came out, I got a free copy because I interviewed the cast 
of The Hobbit. This one was published. Wow. This one was published. These pages are going to break in my hand. 1965. This was a, this is a 1965 version. Um, Goblet of Fire. I got that down there. Yes. Oh, am I going to do this really every single? Of course she is. Goblet of Fire. I'm building up a stack here. Um, Skyward. Skyward. Skyward Sword. 1984. I can't believe I've got this one. Uh, yep. <laughs> 1984. <laughs> Done. VODs are available on Nerdist if you want to. Ready Player One. <laughs> if it's not in this bookcase, it's in my other bookcase in the bedroom. But I, I feel like, I feel like. Uh, is it? No. No, I guess not. But I got Ready Player One and Ready Player Two in the other one. Hitchhiker's Guide. Okay, I like this. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Check. Um, Bill Bryson's book, Beatles book, uh, Emily's book. Emily's book. So Emily's our cousin. She wrote books. I've got her two books here. Emily Garrett. She wrote two books. The Village Dogs of Pucklechuck, book one and book two. All right, Darcy. I'm going to have to put all this back in, of course, but uh, isn't Ryan Gosling cast to lead uh, Project Hail Mary? Yes, he is, actually. Cursed Child. Oh, don't read that. Don't. I, I didn't finish it. Don't read it. I can't recommend it. Um, Orwell, shrugs. <laughs> Morphinia says I had to read that one for college. Yeah, we had to do it in high school. It's so depressing. It's so depressing. And then, of course, we did it again for Nerdist. I recommended it because I was like, essential reading, depressing. And that was when it was in 2016 when Trump just came into power and we we're like, oh, God, <laughs> so depressing. Uh, I'm particularly curious about the Harry Potter series, but I don't want to read that due to terrible views and actions of the author. That's really, really hard because if you're a millennial, you grew up with Harry Potter and it had such a profound impact. Like we all were able to kind of escape into this magical world. JK Rowling's views on the trans community aren't great. And that's really, really hard to have to kind of shut the door on something that had such a profound effect on your life because she just can't shut up <laughs> and she won't she, the double down. Uh, it's hard. Um, Harry is an abusive father in that one. Goo. Teresa says, what you can do is borrow them and then you aren't giving money to JK. Ah, Darcy coming in with the solutions. Good idea for that one. Uh, what's the road? And is Skyward, is that, um, Brandon Sanderson's uh, book because I think I bought it on Audible. I think I've got that one as well. So that's about the 16 books, huh? Hating on paintings is how Darth Maud got her start. <laughs> Great. Yeah, Brandon Sanderson. Got it. Cormac McCarthy. Cormac. Isn't he... I couldn't get it into Ready Player Two because the protagonist is wrong from the get-go and you know it. Yeah, true. What a really good feedback on that one. I It's been on my, it's been at like 10% on my Goodreads. I started it. I actually borrowed it from Josh, who I lost the painting competition to. And I had it for so long that I just bought him another copy because I was like, oh, I'm just, I don't know if I'll ever finish this. Mm. Morphinia says, I have friends that were into Harry Potter back in the day. I just never picked it up then. I was trying to, before the movies came out, I'd read it. Mum bought me the book when I was in grade eight. And I think the movies came out when I was in grade 10. And I read this book and I was like, this is the best thing I've ever read in my life. I failed Japanese because of it. Like I was under the, the duvet with the, you know, um, torch kind of thing, reading till 3 a.m. Because uh, I couldn't stop. And... I was trying to hand my copy to my friends going, please read this. And I shit you not. They said, who gives a shit about a wizard boy? Mm hmm. 
well. Um, hello, Emberant Leah. Lovely to have you here. I'm leaning into the geriatric millennial myself. Mm-hmm. Maud got ahead of me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. We were texting each other during the book seven after each chapter. We would write the page in which a character dies. And Darcy was a little bit ahead and he goes, 89. And I was like, no. <laughs> it was Hedwig. <laughs> so bad. And then I just didn't stop. I read the whole book. I think I read it in like 18 hours. Um, I just, yeah, I just kept reading. And I sacrificed sleep just so I could read it. And then I got so shitty at people who took their time. So if anyone was reading the book, I'd be like, oh, man, when Ron dies. Oh, because I'm that asshole. Yeah, borrow it from the library. Uh, Michelle says, oh, man, Harry Potter was, like, so important to middle school and high school social life. Everyone I knew was on board with Harry Potter. Yep. Chris says, I've got a, leading, a learning disorder, but Harry Potter kept me reading. And now I have uh, read Wheel of Time a few times. Yes. So I'm trying to get um, my brothers into Project Hail Mary because I think that that's a really good kickstart for books again and I think that if Darcy is writing fantasy then he needs to read fantasy books because I'm like I've been brought in as the hey this is the plot has this been done before because I've read all the books and I'm like that's kind of been done that hasn't really been done that's new um Darcy said before I wrote wrote my book I rewrote book one of Harry Potter and it's rated R yeah, you didn't. You did a what if Harry Potter wasn't made for kids? What if it was made for adults? Yeah, so you like rewrote it basically. Um, secondhand books are also a good way to go if you want to read Harry Potter. I think the first three books are the best. Rat Attack Shark says, I love Andy Weir. Uh, Rat Attack Shark, we have read two Andy Weir books already. We've read Project Hail Mary and we just did The Martian. I think it was last month. And my mum who's also then Dorizo's mum, joined in as a psychologist, spoke about, she read The Martian and we talked about sort of like the psychological implications of being stranded on a different planet by yourself for a year and a half. Geek Burger. She wasn't a fan. No, she loved Project Hail Mary though. Uh, Morphinia says, have you read Lock-In, Maud? It's by John Scalzi. I have not. I have not. Aaron says, I've read Wheel of Time 1 to 11 at least four times. And 12 to 13 and 14, the final book, Once, which is the chonkiest book and read by, wrote, written by Brandon Sanderson. Horror Harry Potter. Yeah, that's what Dart tried to do. It was kind of fucked up, actually. <laughs> but when you look at, like, what evil could do with magic, yeah, I get it. Uh, civil disobedience for kids. Read Harry Potter through book five for the sake of the children. Sprinkles has got to go. Peace out. Have fun in your comedy. If you're doing comedy again, Wheel of Time is intimidating to me based on size alone. Yeah. Look, you're looking at three years to read the whole series, basically. Uh, Black Belt says lock in and the sequel were really great. Pop it on the list. We got the spreadsheet. Let's add these books into it. Um, all right. That is time for us. We have hit two hours. Thanks to everyone who stuck around from the raid with Sage. Really appreciate you. Thanks for letting us talk books. As mentioned, two book clubs, Geek Bomb, Nerdist. Geek Bomb's the first half of the month with one book. Nerdist is the second half of the month with the second book. Uh, we have a handy little discord with all this information. You get the most out of it. If you do join the Patreon, uh, there's the link to join the discord. Come by, say hi. Uh, if you do want to unlock all the full book club perks, if you do really want a home to read two books a month with the cool crew, uh, join up to the Patreon. It's just five bucks. You not only get to be in the show each week, but you also um, get the sneaky, sneaky noticed after show as well. Um, for everyone who is still in the chat, we got Vaden, uh, we got Michelle, we got Lisa, we got Aaron, we got Darian. How, who here has read Song of Achilles? If you have, feel free to unmute. Has anyone read it? Has anyone read Gideon yet? Thanks, Duga. I haven't read it. I am uh, actually have it on order already. I had it pre-ordered, so the Song of Achilles. So that that's on its way to me. And then I do already own the Gideon, the Night books, but... I haven't read those either. So these are all going to be new books for me. Every time Lisa says something, I'm like, same, uh, but I'm the same. I have, I've got both the books on Audible. So this is 
I mean, I started book club to have people hold me accountable for my own TBR. That's kind of how this is. But everyone seems to be wanting to read them as well, which is great. So we're going to get through some books. Aaron says, I started Gideon last year, but I stopped when I realized that we'd probably eventually read it for book club. Oh, cool, cool, cool. And Michelle says, I figured we'd read these together. So I've been holding off. Yay, this is going to be great. Two, uh, a month full of two books. It's going to be, it's going to be great. It's going to be great. I'm not saying that Lisa and Maud are the same person, but has anyone seen them in the same room? That's true. That hasn't happened. Uh, oh, wait. Did I get you on a video once, though? I think I did. Play the Board says, I've read Gideon and I can't wait to read Achilles. Well, Play the Board, if you do want to read Achilles with Nerdist and Rachel Hine, who is the lead editor, and I think she's now VP of Partnerships for Nerdist, um, we are going to be doing that show Wednesday, 5 p.m. PT, on Nerdist's YouTube page, Nerdist's Facebook page, and Geek and Sundry's Twitch page. So join us for that. Um, I love being able to see the same names um, for each of the shows. It's a lot of fun. It's a great community. Bike Belt says, Book Club just made my TBR larger in a great way. Yay. All righty, let's raid into someone. Let's pass that lovely raid love on. Um, Sage was so wonderful by raiding in earlier. Who have we got? The Dungeon Run has a show. Oh, it's Jason Charles Miller. Yes, it's a free concert. Every time, it's my favorite. Oh, I did it wrong. Raid. Uh, if you have the night off, please stick by Jason Charles Miller. He puts on um, basically a free concert. <laughs> that's so amazing on his Twitch and you can, I think drop bits to be able to nominate a song. And he has a book list of like so many songs. So it's such a treat. I love being able to put people onto Jason Charles Miller. He's so fantastic. And now I've got to reshelve all of these books, evil sibling. <laughs> I know. <laughs> what have I done? Look at all of these. What have I done? Oh, well, that'll be fun. Dude is mad talented. Sure is. Say hi. Okay. Bye everyone. Thank you chat. Sorry you had to kind of got derailed with the raid, but thank you so much for being patient with me and allowing 